Welcome to Research Business Daily Report, where market researchers come for news, insights, and commentary about the research field, where they're exposed to knowledge and other information that they can apply to their personal professional research interests and careers, and that goes both inside and outside their current place of work. We have news on RBDR today about a novel survey tool that was designed specifically for millennials. But the innovator says it's generating unbelievable participation, completion research rates, and results from other groups as well. RBDR is sponsored today and this week by Nuance, a decision analyst company that offers its clients multi-language verbatim coding services so they can quantify the meaning of open-ended answers. Nuance has a document called Tips for Choosing a Coding Partner. It's designed both for those who don't know much about coding as well as those who do but would like to get updated. And we'll tell you at the end of today's RBDR how you can access the document. Hey, if we put all of our cards on the table, there's just no getting around the fact that consumers are overwhelmingly uninterested and in many cases put off with even the thought of participating in an online survey. Participation rates are so low and completion rates are pathetic. Only professional survey takers seem to be open to taking a survey that you send them. No wonder there's been a growing body of opinion that surveys are about to go the way of dinosaurs. Astonishingly, after not even two decades of online research uh, existence. The research world took a big step in recent years. It decided to henceforth call respondents participants, noting that they are actually people. Now, it has also discussed treating potential participants better, showing them respect and overthrowing how online surveys are conducted. But notice I said there's been a lot of talk in that vein. Unfortunately, actual change has been minimal. The word that has been bandied about, but mostly there has been even more talk and less action. Now, there may be a glint of actual research change with the way we do our surveys. It calls itself Swerveys, and its CEO, Zachary Rosga, is our guest. Swervey, Rosga says, wants to do away with the word surveys. Now, maybe he's being tongue-in-cheek when he says that, maybe not. I'm going to let him fill in on the vital details, including the fact that although Swerveys is proving itself wildly popular with millennials, other age groups think it's pretty cool as well. Swerveys is the swipe plus survey platform where it's all swipe no type. We've gotten rid of buttons and boxes and we've replaced that with swipes and gestures. Why and how do you know that that's the way that, that uh, respondents prefer uh, to take a survey? So my product was developed in the hands of people between the ages of 18 and 24. And we noticed that these people are exclusively mobile device users. And one of the most popular apps that's out there, which is essentially a data collection tool, is called Tinder. It's a yes, no question. And we realized if we wanted to get data from those people, we have to meet them where they're at. And we have to speak the language that they speak, which is a mobile language. Mm -hmm. And so our objective has been from the outset with surveys is how do we increase the completion rate? And we've been very successful. We're about a year old, and we are platform-wide over 60% completion. 60% completion rates. Yeah, and I would say, from what I can find in published data, our next closest competitor is in the teens. Hmm. And when you say completion rates, you're not, you are literally talking about answering every question. Yeah. If you ask eight questions, you get eight, you get answers to eight responses from every person who takes it. And you apparently have discovered from the research you did that that is not the way the rest of the industry necessarily defines as completion rates. No. Um, talking to customers, we found out that completion rates means did somebody answer one, two, or three of your questions. Hmm. And you found that out how? by selling my product to companies, and I guess they'd be okay with me saying it, Marriott, um, we found out that they 
had a different term, which they called abandonment rate, and which was very high. Hmm. Okay. So 60% versus, you said, 16%. Um, but you take it even further than that, because after the survey is done, you do deliver some other extras to the respondent, don't you? Yeah, we like to say surveys is feedback plus benefits. And so at the end of a survey, our users have the opportunity to add a call to action. And depending on the type of organization you are, uh, if you're a nonprofit, maybe it's donate to my cause. If you're a civic organization, maybe it is sign a petition. If you're a product, maybe it's get a discount on your next t-shirt purchase. Uh, we call that the call to action, and we make sure to tie that to the data of the people that you are surveying. Or, sorry, I just used survey. I mean, surveying. <laughs> And, and you encourage your customers um, to also provide data in, in one fashion or another. Yeah, that is a feature of surveys. Every single survey has see what others think. And at a minimum, we give away to the, to the takers one data point. You can show all the data points to your takers, but we force every single person who makes a survey to provide at least one data point. Because we live in a give-get society today, and the minimum that every person who's acting in questions of their community can give back is some of that data that they're asking from them. I have been a consumer of survey products my entire life, and I've been conducting research all around the world in different languages, um, different cultural contexts. And so surveys is actually the culmination of my career out in the field. Because when I was working overseas, the challenge we had was language, culture, et cetera. And so we had to boil our, our surveys down into its basic elements. And today that same thing is true, but it's about attention span and the challenge of cracking through all of the noise to be able to see what others think. And so this, the same principles are true when you're trying to talk to somebody from a different cultural context today, which is ask simple to the point, basic questions, make it fun, and people will respond. How do surveys make it fun? So surveys is built like a game. So every survey is like a deck of cards. And you throw the card in the direction of your answer. And so we also restrict every single survey to 10 cards or 9 questions. And we, we encourage the use of graphic design in each survey so that they are totally white label and customized to the person making it. We use them on tablets. We have used them on uh, large platform touch screens. And we've also made it so that it works on a desktop. Instead of, you can flick the card with a click and drag, or you can just click on the answer. Hmm. Okay, all right. When you did the research with um, the young people, and apparently you're at the University of Washington, yeah, we're headquartered at uh, CoMotion Labs, which is a really unique entity inside of the university where we are on campus, but we're a tenant of an uh, office space. Did you actually do research with these young people, to, and did you give them options as to how would they prefer to take you know, a survey? I, yeah, I would say we did more than research. We built it with them. So all along as we were designing this product and going through the – rigor of development, we did it with and in concert with students. So people between the ages of 18 to 24. And we were very open to changes and feedback. And so what is out there today was designed inside of what we consider the target audience of a survey. That being said, baby boomers also love it. And I had a quote, and it's one of my favorite quotes. Oh, man, this was so easy. And guess what? I didn't even have to put my glasses on. <laughs> I can relate to that. What you've just seen is just a portion of our interview with Zach. We're going to have much more about surveys in the upcoming edition of Research Business Report our 24-year-old market research newsletter that is a must-read for anybody that wants to stay on top 
of changing developments in technologies, methodologies, and economics in market research. If you are not subscribing, well, go visit rflonline.com and join us. That's your Research Business Daily Report. We've been sponsored today and all this week by Nuance, a decision analyst company offering multi-language verbatim coding services to its clients to help them quantify the meaning of open-ended answers. Because coding is not necessarily something that a researcher gets involved with each and every day, you may have not been aware that coding has actually gotten a lot better in recent years. And that makes the link to a nuanced document entitled Tips for Choosing a Coding Partner something in your wheelhouse so you can stay on top of important changes in research. So click the link that we've created. It's in the email that goes to our subscribers. It's also in the description box underneath today's video. Have yourself a great research day. We hope this is a prosperous research week for you business-wise. Let's all enjoy the upcoming weekend, and we'll see you back here with us on Monday.